All right, all right. Welcome back. This time, I've got a move that most people know and either love or hate. Flash Strike on Deadly Ninja. I love the fact that it's essentially a teleport ability, which means I can analyze it using my favorite kind of physics. Stupidly unrealistic and debatable. Right, off the bat, we have to discuss the elephant in the room with this move. You teleport. Yes, teleport. I'm almost 100% certain, given that if you do a quick frame analysis of the move, there is only a one frame difference, and possibly less, between the starting and ending position of your character executing the move. Of course, if I had the capability of clipping with a high FPS, I could check this, but let's go off this assumption, because it's fun and I'm getting excited. So, the total distance travelled is 56 studs. I checked this using my build mode with a stud block and triple checked it afterwards to make sure it was consistent, which it is to within one stud. Now, let's discuss some things that I touched on in my analysis of the strongest hero's omnidirectional punch move. You see, as a massive body approaches speeds that are referred to as relativistic, meaning significant fractions of the speed of light or the speed of light itself, we can no longer use physics referred to as classical mechanics. This is simply because its formulae, rules and tools do not account for such ridiculous circumstances. So this is where we start to use some very interesting physics. I'm going to give you two scenarios. It's possible that your character is simply overcoming the persistence of the human eye in this move, meaning that it's moving fast enough that your eye physically cannot process the incoming light within the time of the move. Or your character is moving really fast. So what's the persistence of the human eye? It's about 1 16th of a second. So let's assume that within that 1 16th of a second, your character moves 56 studs. Now 56 studs times 28 centimeters is 1,568 centimeters. Then into meters would be 15.68 meters. Speed is equal to distance over time. So 15.68 divided by one over 16 is 250.88 meters per second. Now that's fast but the speed of sound in air, for example, is 343 meters per second. So logically, based off of the move not making a sonic boom, this could be a fair analysis of the situation. In this case, your kinetic energy would be half times your mass times your velocity squared, which would come out to half times 75 times 250.88 to the power of two. That's 2,360,279 joules. That's all well and good. That's a lot of energy. Though, it's only enough to power a basic appliance for less than an hour. Yes, it's impressive that we generate that instantly, but still. Here's my other perspective. Do you notice how when you use the move, there are a lot of these little purple slash marks that appear, not exactly in your line of travel? This, to me, implies that you actually move to the sides and perform these elongated slashes multiple times within the time it takes you to travel between your starting and ending position. So how can I estimate how fast you would have to go so that this didn't allow someone to perceive you doing it? Well, at the minimum here, you're moving to, by my estimation, about 20 slightly different positions during your path, since this is about how many slashes I can see. Let's say that these positions differ by an approximate value of 10 studs each from one another. That would mean that you move closer to the 200 stud mark in this minimal time frame. 200 studs is 5,600 centimeters which is 56 meters. That would adjust our speed value to 896 meters per second, and hence our kinetic energy value to 30,105,600. That's over 10 times the other value. But I still have a problem with this. This is around Mach 2.6, which is 2.6 times the speed of sound. It's likely that there would be a sonic boom and possibly even multiple of them if you change directions. This doesn't sit well with me since we don't observe any sonic booms. Personally, I think it makes more sense that perhaps, just perhaps, you are moving at relativistic speeds. You see, if a body such as our character were to somehow have the energy to start moving at a speed like this almost instantaneously, as we see this move allow us to do, it's more probable that more exotic physical phenomena would occur before the medium we are traveling through, air, has time to actually create the shockwave. The shockwave occurs if there is sufficient interaction with the medium itself, and if the object interacts with the particles faster than they themselves can propagate the disturbance. This is effectively what sound waves are. But you see, moving at relativistic speeds promotes things like ionization to the medium, which would create plasma as we propagate through it. This may actually be able to cancel out the shockwave effect and might be the reason why the move itself appears blurry. 
Now, if this is the case, let's assume we're moving at a significant fraction the speed of light, say half of it, 0.5 C, where C is exactly three times 10 to the eight meters per second as our approximation for the speed of light. Now, we have to calculate what's called the Lorentz factor. I've gone through this in my omnidirectional punch video. Go watch that if you wanna know more, but for the sake of this, I'll tell you that this value comes out to 1.414. Then our kinetic energy formula for relativistic circumstances is actually that Lorentz value minus one all multiplied by mass times the speed of light squared. This comes out to 2.79 by 10 to the 18 joules of energy. Now, here we go. This is equal to 669,216,061.2 tons of TNT, which is 669 megatons of TNT. Now, this does depend on the fraction of the speed of light I use, but isn't that just a cool value to end on? As always, let me know if you have any ideas for some moves for me to analyze. See ya.